What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 5. And in the last chapter, we saw a lot about false doctrines and how the people of God are destroyed for lack of knowledge and how knowledge comes through the scripture. Knowledge comes through his word and is only revealed through the Holy Spirit through studying his word. Keeping his commandments, that's knowledge. And so here we are in Hosea 5. And let's get into it. Here in Hosea 5, we have the judgment. The judgment on the people of God. Hear this, O priests. Give heed, O house of Israel. And we know the house of Israel, that's referring to believers. Christians. Listen, O house of the king. House of the king. The people of the king. King Jesus. For the judgment applies to you. Now this is speaking to all of us. Believers. Believers in Jesus Christ. Christians. And some people like to not, uh, let me just continue. You have been a snare at Mizpah and a net spread out on Tabor. So if we look up Mizpah, let's see. The definition of a uh, Mizpah means a watchtower. A watchtower or the lookout, the watchman. We're talking about the watchman watching for the return of Jesus. Have been a snare for the people by misleading them. And there's much more, there's much more to the snare thing as well. But I'm not going to really get into that right now. If you watch a lot of my Bible studies, then maybe you know. But, uh, you have been a snare at Mizpah, which means watchtower or lookout, a watchman. And a net spread out on Tabor. And Mizpah and Tabor actually re represent the east and the west as well. And Tabor. And a net spread out on Tabor. Tabor, let's see. A mound. Tabor can mean choice. Purity. Bruising. And that can mean a lot of things. Um, a net spread out on Tabor, which means choice. Purity. And bruising. And as we're going to see here in a minute, we see the same thing that we just saw in Micah chapter 3. How the false prophets... Uh, mislead the people and uh, basically leading them to sin and destroying their spiritual body, destroying their relationship with God. The garment, and we're going to see that the garment later on in this chapter as well. For you have been a snare at Mizpah and a net spread out on Tabor. The revolters have gone deep in depravity. And uh, I looked up the word for depravity. And let's see. Let me get it pulled up. Because it means uh, the actual translation means something different. 
Give me one second. It's the Hebrew word shachat. 78.19 shachat. And it means to slaughter, to beat. Scroll down here. Kill, offer, shoot out. Slay, slaughter. And sacrifice or massacre. And... I'm going to read out of Micah 3 here in a second, but back to Hosea 5 again real quick. The revolters have gone deep in slaughter. And we we know this is speaking about, well, it's, it says here, uh, it's speaking about the people of God and also the leaders of God, God's people. Hear this, O priests, give heed, O house of Israel. So that's both. But in this case, the revolters have gone deep in slaughter, referring to referring to uh, the leaders, and we see this in Micah chapter three. Hear now, you leaders of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel. Is it not for you to know justice, you who hate good and love evil, who tear off their skin from them and their flesh from their bones, who eat the flesh of my people, strip off their skin from them, smash their bones and chop them up as for the pot and as meat in a cauldron? The revolters have gone deep in slaughter, but I will chastise all of them. And whether that's the leaders being referred to as the re revolters or uh, people who aren't the leaders and are slaughtering themselves through sin. But I will chastise all of them. I know Ephraim. And Israel is not hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot. Israel has defiled themselves. They're speaking about us. And before I continue... Well, let me just hold off, hold off on this verse. Holy Spirit is telling me to hold off on this verse. I'm going to just continue. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot. Israel has defiled itself. Their deeds will not allow them to return to their God. For a spirit of harlotry is within them. And they do not know Yahuwah. They do not know the Lord. So this is speaking about the foolish virgins. Their deeds will not allow them to return to their God. For a spirit of harlotry is within them, and they do not know the Lord. And we know God by keeping his commandments, by staying away from iniquity. So let's go over to 1 Matthew 7. And I'm going to start in. Uh, I'm going to start in verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for the way is wide. Or, or for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life, the narrow path. And there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come, for you, or co who come to you in sheep's clothing, who seem like the sheep, who seem like the regular believers, true believers. 
Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Just trying to make sure power didn't cut off uh, in the house here. Power cut off like three or four times in the last couple of hours, and but only for a couple of seconds. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, or nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them, may be compared to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house. The house is the person. Yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and great was its fall. See, it's all about obedience. And over to Matthew 25. I'm going to just read the parable of the ten virgins real quick. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins. Ten representing the ten northern tribes of the house of Israel. which uh, prophetically is believers. Then the kingdom of heaven will be comparable to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. The Holy Spirit. But the prudent took oil and flasks along with their lamps. Now, while the bridegroom was delaying, they all got drowsy and began to sleep. This is what's happening right now. But at midnight, there was a shout. Behold the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. This is going to happen one of these days. And that's the voice, of Mark, the voice of the archangel, Michael. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And a foolish said to the prudent, Give, a, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the prudent said, Answered, No, there will not be enough for us and you too. Go instead to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they were going away to make the purchase, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding feast. And the door was shut. But he answered, uh, Well, later the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Be on the alert, for you do not know the day and the hour. And I'm still working out the understanding on a lot of this stuff. Because what we're going to see in the next chapter, we have three days. See, what we have in here in Hosea 5. I 
I believe is what we, what what I'm talking about right now. The wise and the foolish virgins, but uh, but we learn after the three days. God ha has compassion and saves all His people. But uh, I'm still in the process of trying to work all this out. Now, maybe the revelation would be too great. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't deserve it. I, I know I don't deserve it to understand this. I know Ephraim, and Israel is not hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have played the harlot. Israel has defiled itself, speaking about believers. Their deeds will not allow them to return to their God. For a spirit of harlotry is within them, and they do not know the Lord, Yahuwah. Moreover, the pride of Israel testifies against him. And Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. And this is the reason given. This is the reason Jesus said, depart from me. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. And Israel and Ephraim stumble in their iniquity. Judah, Judah also, the Jews, Judah also has stumbled with them. They will go with their flocks and herds to seek Yahuwah, to seek the Lord, but they will not find him. He is withdrawn from them. They have dealt treacherously against Yahuwah, against the Lord. For they have borne illegitimate children, and this is what we've been seeing in, um, in Micah and in Hosea the last few days. The Ill illegitimate children... That's the believers, the people in the, in the church that aren't truly saved. The people that claim the name but aren't truly saved, don't truly have a relationship with God. It's illegitimate children. They're not truly saved. They're not truly born again. They're not truly uh, saved by the blood. They haven't truly turned to God. And this is about, this is about us. This is about fellow believers. If, if it's not, if it's not about me and other people watching this video, I hope it's not. But it's about our fellow believers in the body of Christ. And we know there's a lot of false converts and a lot of false teachers. And this is a, this is a horrible thing. And this is what the Bible speaks about. They have dealt treacherously against Yahuwah. For they have borne illegitimate children. Now the new moon will devour them with their land. And the new moon uh, was just sighted, I believe, tonight. And um, be another one in a couple weeks, I guess. Blow the horn in Gibeah, the trumpet in Ramah. Sound an alarm at Beth Avon. Behind you, Benjamin, and Benjamin, that's part of the Jews. So blow it, blow the horn in Gibeah, the trumpet in Ramah. Sound an alarm at Beth Avon. Behind you, Benjamin. And I'm not going to go through these different names right now. But it's referring to uh, the land of Israel. And also referring to uh, the same type of stuff we've been talking about. How, in reference to the name meanings, how, how uh, there's people that aren't right with God. Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. Ephraim will become a desolation. See, Ephraim can be referring to believers, but it, all, it could also be referring to the land, which is America. Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. 
Among the tribes of Israel, I declare what is sure. The princes of Judah have become like those who move a boundary. This is the peace deal. This is the peace deal between Israel and the Palestinians. This has been the major... This is what the whole last 70 years in the Middle East has been all about. How Israel was reestablished as a nation in the land which they were calling Palestine. And the Palestinians are, from my understanding, just different, just Arabs from different nations, from Jordan, from, from other different nations that were living in, in that land. But there was never, there's never been a historical uh, Palestinians dating back a long time. From my understanding. But it's uh, the children of uh, Ishmael. The descendants of Ishmael. But this is the peace deal. The princes of Judah have become like those who move a boundary. And as a result of that. On them I will pour out my wrath like water. And this is what we see. First Thessalonians. Thessalonians 5.3, while they are saying peace and safety, or more uh, accurately translated, peace and security, because this, these are the actual terms they're using here in these last days, peace and security. While they are saying peace and security, then destruction will come upon them suddenly, like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape, and that's... Uh, that woman with child, every time the woman with child is mentioned, it's a reference to, uh, well, that, chi that child is uh, the body of Christ being born. At the very least, 144,000. And um, the woman being Israel. So whenever you see the labor pains, like a woman, woman with child or, or a woman in labor, it's a reference to the resurrection and right right around that time. Right right around this time of the end the end days. Right at the tribulation time. But while they're saying peace and safety or peace and security, then destruction will come upon them suddenly. And that destruction is the wrath of God, it's the attack on Israel. Gog Magog War is uh, the U.S. being attacked, Babylon, or the daughter ba daughter of Babylon, and um, again, the princes of Judah, and you know it's it's crazy because it says princes of Judah, not the prince of Judah, not the one prince of Judah, but the princes of Judah because there's two leaders of Judah right now, two leaders of modern-day Israel, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz. They've gone through three elections, about to be headed to the fourth, if time permits, but I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if time will permit them to go to a fourth election before Jesus comes back. But that's why it says princes. The princes of Judah have become like have become like those who move a boundary. On them, I will pour out my wrath like water for dividing his land. And give me one second. And we also see here in Joel chapter 3, verse 2. I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there. And that judgment is his uh, is when Jesus comes on the clouds. At the, at the Gog Magog war. I will enter into judgment, judgment with them there on behalf of my people. 
and my inheritance Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and they have divided up my land. And if you go to my YouTube channel, I always leave the YouTube link. If you're not watching this on YouTube, I always leave the YouTube link to the video. But if you go to my channel, um, the first video on my channel, the main video, is called uh, Peace and Security. About this peace deal. And it was made uh, early last year. Uh, right after they originally released the original peace deal. But it's going to... Um, but is it going to become the covenant with many that's spoken about in Daniel 9.27? And when they're saying peace and security, it's when it's going to happen. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment, because he was determined to follow man's command. And this has multiple meanings because Ephraim represents multiple things. It repre represents uh, the U.S. and it represents believers. And in, in the case of believers, determined to follow man's command. Believers are determined to follow the com commands of man over the commands of God. They're willing to follow the doctrines of man over the truth of the Word of God. Most people are. And as far as following man's command, just look at what's going on in the world right now. With all the mask mandates and the vaccinations they're trying to force on the people. And everybody's just listening to man. Listening to... And doing what they're told by man. And uh, through all this, uh, I mean, people are brainwashed through the media. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment because he was determined, determined to follow man's command. And also, if we go over here to Hosea chapter 9, verse 13. Ephraim, as I have seen, is planted in a pasture like Tyre and Ephraim is Tyre or Tyre is the uh, the U.S. and Ephraim that's referring to the to the believers Ephraim is a, as I've seen is planted in a pasture like Tyre but Ephraim is going to bring out his children for slaughter had uh <laughs> just had ice snowfall off the window here may kind of made me jump if you saw that <laughs> that's what it was uh, but Ephraim is going to bring out his children for slaughter because they're following man's command they're following the government and everything the government says everything the media says and they're uh This is speaking about the believers. Ephraim is going to bring out his his children, bring out his children for slaughter. Speaking about, uh, I believe the the some of the leaders of Ephraim bringing out their congregations to slaughter. And um, you know, so many people don't realize we're in the end days. So many people, uh, you know, and this whole vaccine thing and the mask thing is a big part of everything. And it's going to cause a lot of betrayal here in these last days. And that's only part of it. But there's going to be a lot of betrayal by so-called believers. There's going to be a lot of betrayal by family members and friends. And Jesus spoke about this said you will be betrayed by friends, family, and it will put some of you some of you to death. Just like it says here.
But Ephraim is going to bring out his children for slaughter. Speaking about uh, what's spoken about in, I believe what's spoken about in Revelation chapter 2. The devil will cast some of you into prison for 10 days. Be faithful until death and receive the crown of life. Ephraim was oppressed, crushed in judgment because he was determined to follow man's command. Therefore, I am like a moth to Ephraim and like rottenness to the house of Judah. And a moth. Let me just read this one scripture. Out of Isaiah 51 verse 8. For the moth will eat them like a garment, and the grub will eat them like wool. So, so certain types of moths eat through garments, eat through uh, different clothing materials. We know garment represents basically our. You know, our garment can represent our body. I mean, it can represent a couple of things, actually. It can represent our body, but... Uh, but more our spiritual body. As we just spoke about in the last chapter of Micah. Micah 3. I will be like a moth to Ephraim. And like rottenness to the house of Judah. And uh, let me just continue. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria. This is speaking about the United States. That's Assyria, an end time Bible prophecy. Then Ephraim went to Assyria and, and sent to King Jareb, J A R E B. And before doing the study, uh, I was. Thinking maybe it's uh maybe it's referring to the Antichrist, maybe it's referring to uh Jared rather than Jareb. Jared Kushner. But um uh, in the footnote it says the avenging king or the great king. Which could also also be referring to the Antichrist, but in this case, based on the timing of this and everything, the it's the king of Assyria, which is the Assyrian, which is Trump. Then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to Trump. And there's a... Uh, we're going to talk more about him in the next chapter of Ezekiel. And there's, uh, there's something major in there. That I don't have a complete understanding on yet. But. But we'll see. But he's definitely not. He's not who he says he is. And. Uh, if y'all remember. You know I won't even say this but. He's not who he's de depicting himself to be. As a man of God. You know. <laughs> Then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob, but he is unable to heal you or cure, or, or cure, cure you of your wound. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim. Speaking about the, uh, speaking about believers. And also the U.S. Because the, the people in the land are always linked together. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim, and as a young lion, and like a young lion to the house of Judah, which is uh, the Jews and modern day Israel. He's going to be like a lion to Ephraim, and a young lion to Judah, because 
it's because this is the judgment of God on uh I mean it's gonna be bad for a lot of believers here in this country. And uh, and America's gonna be wiped out. And uh Israel is gonna be bad for them as well, but only two thirds of the Jews are gonna be killed. And uh that's when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's Ezekiel 38, when he comes on the clouds and defends them personally. So they're not all destroyed. And that's why it's a, like, a, like a lion and like a young lion. For I'll be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear in pieces and go away. I will carry away and there will be none to deliver. And let me just look this up real quick. Give me one second. None to deliver. Okay, so there, I knew there were some other scriptures uh, in reference to this. So, Psalm 7. Psalm 50. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 50. Well, maybe not Isaiah 50. So, three of those scriptures. So, let me uh, go through some of these scriptures real quick. So, Psalm 7. O Yahuwah, my God, and you I have taken refuge. Save me from all those who pursue me and deliver me, or he will tear my soul like a lion, dragging me away while there is none to deliver. And uh, there's a lot more here in Psalm 7, but it's in reference to this end time, the the captivity that's going to happen and let me just go to Psalm 50 real quick Let's read verse 22 and 23. Now consider this, you who forget God, or I will tear you in pieces and there will be none to deliver. And that's uh, actually on my gospel tracks, that, that verse. He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. And he who orders his weight of right, I shall show the salvation of God. In Isaiah 42, let me just pull up the full chapter. But this is a people plundered and despoiled. All of them are trapped in caves or are hidden or or are hidden away in prisons at captivity. They have become a prey with none to deliver them. None to deliver. And a spoil with none to say give them back. And this is about the wrath of God here in a in the last days and his judgment which is going to come up on some of us through the hands of men. 
back here to Jose 5. For I will be like a lion to Ephraim and like a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear in pieces and go away. I will carry away and there will be none to deliver. I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. So it's speaking about, like I said, the foolish virgins. From my understanding. And he said, I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. He just wants us to recognize that we're wrong. And seek him. So so forget waiting until that time. Forget waiting until his judgment's upon us. Let's seek him now. Let's humble ourselves before him now. Let's make sure we're right with him now. That's all that truly matters. Being a good and faithful servant to him. Nothing else matters. We're living in the last days. Not much time left. And we got to be right with God. We have to be right with Him no matter what. Let's overcome. Let's walk in all His ways. Hallelujah. Let's serve Him with all our heart. His judgment's coming. Judgment is beginning with the people of God before it breaks out on everybody else. The 10 days, I believe, is the 10 days. Leading up to the tribulation time. And there's three days. Like I said, I, got, I still got to work all this out. I still, still got to work out the timeline. God hasn't revealed it all to me yet. Um, but in the next chapter, we're going to see this three days. As we see here in the end of this chapter, it says... Uh, I will go away and return to my place until they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their affliction, they will earnestly seek me. And on the third day from there, on the third day from there, um, he's going to deliver. Hallelujah. But there's so much more to understand about all this stuff. I'm just doing, uh, I'm just giving y'all what he shows me, and um, not everything at once, it'd be too much, but I'm blessed to, to be able to speak his word, and I don't know why I'm getting so tired right now doing this video, but uh, blessed to speak his word, and I don't deserve it, I don't, I don't, consider myself anything I don't deserve the knowledge he gives me and I'm not saying I ha I understand it all I don't uh, there's so much I don't understand as you guys see but uh he has revealed a lot to me through the scriptures and um just praise him for that I just want to share with you guys whatever he gives me and um we're living in the last days Let's overcome. Let's overcome, brothers and sisters. Let's be ready. Let's be right with Him. Let's serve Him with all our heart. That's all that matters. All that matters is being right with Him, being a good and faithful servant, doing all His will, which is obedience to Him and whatever He has us doing for the kingdom. That's all that matters. Let's spread the gospel. Let's stay in the Word. Let's stay in prayer. Let's pray for one another. Let's be ready. Let's walk in all his ways. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today. We're living in the last days. Not much time left. Jesus loves you and he wants to save you. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order to live forever. And no one's perfect. No, We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. 
and a result of sin, the punishment for sin is death. That's the second death in the lake of fire. Death of body and soul. And there's only one way to life. Because he requires perfection, we can't earn our, our way to eternal life. We can't earn our way to heaven. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong. And in his perfection, he took on a punishment for us. Made the sacrifice for us so that through faith in him and what he did on the cross, we receive his perfection through faith. We have our sins wiped away and receive his perfection through faith and are made right with God. That's the only way to be made right with God. It's the only way we can be made right with God. We're living in the last days. The Bible tells us about the days we're living in. And 2020 was not a coincidence and it's not going back to normal. We're there. We're living in the days the Bible speaks about. So give your life to Jesus before it's too late. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's the end of Hosea 5. Love you guys. Shalom.